Hello, this is a video for uh, of an introduction about the SVM or support vector machines. Now, what I want to do in this introduction is to talk about the decision function of uh, the SVM that we start uh, that we start with to talk about or to explain how the SVM works. Now, in most videos uh, that you would find on YouTube that talk about the SVM. What they do is typically they talk about the general idea of SVM and then they develop the theory of this idea based on a decision function like this. So they write a decision function like this. So dx is equal to some vector w dotted by x plus b and they say well if this is higher than zero then it belongs to class uh, p if it's smaller than zero it belongs to the class m and if it is equal to zero then you know this x lies on the boundary or on the hyperplane so what i want to do in this video is to talk about or to develop this expression i want you to understand why we do use this expression what is the source of this um, expression and i think that this would help you to understand uh, the you know the theory of the svm and get a deeper understanding of how svm works right so that's it i will talk in this video about the expression of dx and i want to de develop an expression in this form but first of all before talking about this expression let me uh, just draw a feature space and a boundary so this is my feature space I would consider a two-dimensional feature space and this is a boundary that would separate my data points so everything on the right of this boundary is a positive class so this all the data points that are on the right of this boundary would be positive class, P class, and everything on the left of this boundary would be a negative class. Everything here on the left of the boundary would be a negative class. Okay? So now, what I would do is to consider a vector that is normal to this boundary here. So I would consider some vector w like that. This is a vector w that is normal to this decision boundary. That is, if I extend the line that passes from you know this uh, this vector, then I need I should have 90 degrees here, right? So I would name this vector w. This is, by the way, just O. Oh, this is the center of the feature space, origin of the feature space. Now, what I would do is to consider three points. I would consider XA, XB, and XC in this form. So I would consider, for example, XA here. This is um, XA. This is a point or also a vector. It can be seen as a vector. And I would consider XB here. So this is um, XB. And the third point would be here, XC. And what I wanted from the choice of these three points or these three vectors is just to get one point or one vector that is in the negative class and one point or one vector that is in the positive class and another point that lies on the boundary right so now I need to start so now I want to start uh, by an assumption I will assume that W is a unit vector so this is my assumption assumption let's say that W is a unit vector and if you don't remember what is a unit vector, it just means that the magnitude of W is equal to 1. If I measure the magnitude of this vector, 
I would get a value of 1. So this is what it means for a vector to be a unit vector. Now, how do I get the dot product of this w with this vector here or with this point? I want to calculate the dot product of w with the feature vector or with the vector xa and also with the vector xb and vector xc. Let's start by xa. Well, the dot product uh, is calculated in this way. First, you consider this vector here, and then you need to project that on the line that passes from this uh, vector that you are dotted with. So I need to do a projection on w, on the vector w. Of course, when I do the projection, I get here 90 degrees. Right? So I will call this vector, I will call it, let me call it xap. Right? This is uh, the vector xa projected on w. Now the next step in the dot product is to multiply by the magnitude of that vector here that you are dotting with. So you need to multiply this by the magnitude of w. So you need to multiply this thing here by the magnitude of w. And since w equal to 1, because w is a unit vector, you would just get this vector. Uh, this vector will not change. It would stay the same. Right? So based on this, uh, based on what I explained, I just explained, uh, we can do the same thing on these three vectors. But first of all, let me finish the dot product of W with XA. So what is the dot product of W with XA? Just equal to the magnitude of this vector here, of XAP projected. So this is equal to the magnitude of XAP. That is the projection of XA on W. This is XAP. Similarly, I can calculate uh, the dot product of you know W with XB is W with XB. This would be the vector XBP. This is just the projection of this point here on the, uh, the vector W or the line that passes from the vector W. And <clears throat> this is equal to the magnitude of XA uh, P, rather XB P. And remember that you need to multiply that by the, uh, the magnitude of W, the same thing here. And in our case, based on our assumption, this thing here is equal to 1. This is equal to 1, right? Similarly here, I would find the projection of xc on w, this is xc projected on w, and w dotted by xc is equal to the magnitude of xcp multiplied by the magnitude of w. Now, why this is important? Why the dot product is important? Well, it's important because I can say something like this. I can say, <coughs> I can consider um, this thing here, this value here, as C. I can say, well, set this equal to C, right? So what is this? Now, what is this? The dot product W with XB, that is the magnitude of this vector here, is equal to the distance from the origin to the boundary or to the line uh, or to the decision line right so I can say basically I can say well d of x the decision function d of x can be equal to w dotted by uh, a given you know I give any point in space and if the dot product is higher than c so C, what is C in that case? C is just the distance from here to here, and it's equal, you know, to the magnitude of this vector here, xbp, right? Now, 
if the dot product is higher than C, let me just say it's higher, higher than C, then what I can say is that x in this case lies on this side of the boundary on P. So I can say that x belongs to C. Otherwise, if it's smaller than C, then x belongs to the class N. So this is the class P. Right? And if it is equal to C, then it means just that the, the x vector is just on the boundary or on the hyperplane. So x belongs to the hyperplane. So this is why we use the dot product in the decision function. This is just the idea why we use the dot product in the decision function. Now, what I want to talk about is what is C? So in our case, we are considering that C is equal to xbp multiplied by, you know, the, this magnitude w. And in our case, it's the distance from the origin to this decision line here. So this is my C. In my case, this is C. This is C. But remember that this is true only because we are assuming that w is equal to 1, right? If w is not equal to 1, then the uh, projection of this vector here that lies on the boundary must be multiplied by the magnitude w, and then we take the magnitude of that projection. Let me give you a concrete example on a different page. Say that I have a, the same feature vector space, and this is my decision boundary, and this is the vector w. Right? And what I will do is to consider a point on this decision line here. I can say this is um, x, b, right? And instead of considering that w is a unit vector, I will consider that the magnitude of w is equal to 2. So in that case, what is the dot product of w with xb? Well, in that case, I need to do a projection of xb on w, or on the line that passes from w. So this is the projection of xb on w. This is xb projected on w. And then what I need to do is to multiply this vector by w or by 2 scale it by 2 so i need to scale that by 2 so this i would get something like that almost here so this is 2 x b projected and the dot product is just in this case the magnitude of that vector it's 2 multiplied by x b b which is equal to 2 multiplied by the magnitude of the vector x b p and this 2 here is just you know the magnitude of w so in that case the magnitude of this thing here is not the distance from the center to the decision boundary, it's different, and this is why I'm telling you that this C that I have over here represents the distance from the origin to this boundary here only if W is a unit vector. This is my point. Now that this um, uh, idea is clear about C, about the distance from the origin to the decision boundary, let me um, go back to my original goal, which is to find this decision function here. 
Well, this is easy. Now I can just say that d of x can be equal to w dotted by x minus c. So in that case, if I bring c to this side, this should be higher than 0. And so in that case, I have x belongs to p. Otherwise, if this is smaller than 0, then x belongs to n. And if this is equal to 0, then x belongs to the hyperplane. Right? So in that case, this decision function here, this decision function, d of x equal, you know, this expression, is represents a measure of distance of a given data point or a given vector x from the hyperplane. If I have a vector or a data point x in this side, then the measure of this distance is positive. Otherwise, if x is on this side, the measure of this distance is negative. I get a negative distance. And if it's on this decision line here, then this distance is equal to zero because you know it's as close as possible from this line, so there is no distance at all. Then it's just equal to zero. So I hope now that this expression here is clear d of x equal to w dotted by x uh, uh, minus c and what people do usually uh, in practice they just consider uh, in theory they, they just consider that this minus c is equal to d uh, i don't know why they probably they, they find it that is uh, more convenient so we can write the decision function d of x in this form i can say well it's equal to w dotted by x plus d such that d is equal to minus c.